Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. There's a new malady confronting us today, one which never faced our grandparents. It's news overload. The constant barrage of news today confronts you, compels you, depresses you, triggers your adrenaline, and sends your blood pressure much higher than is healthy for you. News overload. You hear it. You see it. It's in your face. Change channels on TV. It's all the same. Turn on the radio. Hear it discussed. Pick up the newspaper. You have it over and over again. News overload isn't healthy for you. It's more than you were created to handle. So the question is, how much news do you really need? Answer, far less than you think. I'd return from spending weeks ministering overseas in Eastern Europe. For the first week, I never saw a newspaper, heard a telecast, or heard the news on radio. A couple of times I got to a computer to check my email, but after waiting for 45 minutes for a connection, I gave up and decided I could live without it. And you know what I missed? Not much that was really important. I was reminded that neither God nor government really needed my input. Nor did I need the constant barrage of news that confronts us today. Frankly, although my curiosity was piqued about what was happening out there, wherever the rest of the world was, life went on just the same. What a contrast life is today with the simple lifestyle of Jesus and the disciples. He walked through fields of grain with his disciples and talked with them. As they sat on the slopes of Galilee, he talked about the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. He pointed out that the disciples, you can include yourself in that group as a believer, are of far more value to God than the sparrow which falls to the ground, something which even God takes notice of. When they needed to travel, they walked and walked, and walked some more. Healthy? You bet. Far more so than grabbing a fast food's hamburger and fry, and then rushing to your next destination, even if it's to the gym. Want to avoid the news overload which can depress you, innervate you, and create hostility and anger towards your neighbor who happens to be different from you? Try these simple guidelines. First, While you don't necessarily have to avoid the news, don't believe everything you hear or accept the reality that things are necessarily as bad as they appear. News is slanted to create an effect in you which generates an emotional response. Don't sit in front of a TV set and watch CNN or your local news channel hour after hour. It depresses even the technicians who put the shows on the air. Get outside and get some sunshine. Smell the roses, look at the flowers, play with your kids, and mow the grass. Back off from the news and get God's perspective. That's where most people miss out entirely. They forget nothing happens apart from God's express permission. Nations rise and fall, kingdoms come and go, babies are born, and old men and women die. That's part of life. Yet we often forget this. Read the Psalms and hear from God. I often fall back on Psalm 46, which says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. The psalm closes, saying, Be still, and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. That's the real answer to news overload. A few years ago, you could sit and watch the evening news with your family as you had dinner. No more. If you have kids, you just don't want them to see it. Too graphic, too much violence, too much sex. The ultimate reaction is, of course, Hit the button and turn it off. Don't suffer from news overload. Remember, God has a better plan. You can go to our website and download what you've just heard. It is guidelines.org.